I'm Mark Wendell. So I, I'm a product manager at Microsoft. Um, I'm working on SharePoint Embedded, uh, specifically some of the developer experiences stuff around SharePoint Embedded. Uh, we're doing a mini series on SharePoint Embedded. Um, last week, Reed Carlberg um, covered a, an introduction to the product, um, and it, it is in uh, public preview at the moment. So there's lots of documentation and code samples and things like that available online if you check it out. And I can also paste some of the links links to that stuff in the chat when I'm done. Today, we're gonna to cover getting started with SharePoint Embedded. Uh, so I'm gonna give you an overview of the anatomy of a SharePoint Embedded application so you understand kind of what makes uh, what makes up a SharePoint Embedded app and a little bit of the structure of things there. And then I'm gonna show you how to enable it. So something that you need to do uh, currently while we're in public preview is to actually go to the SharePoint Admin Center and enable the product. And then we'll do a quick setup um, all of that anatomy and setup stuff, we'll do that uh, quickly with the VS Code extension, and then I'll show you how you can run the sample apps through there and use the Postman collection. Okay, so this is a slide that we looked at last week, and I just want to do a little bit of review there. Uh, ultimately, SharePoint Embedded is a headless uh, developer focused uh, content partition with an M365 tenant that allows you to bring the power of the Microsoft 365 storage platform to your custom applications. The fundamental unit uh, within SharePoint Embedded is uh, a, a file storage container. And this is a, a new entity that we've created or basically a new storage partition within an M365 tenant that lets you uh, create and manage content within that tenancy. I'm going to zoom into that a little bit um, and so talk a little bit about containers and so kind of covering the anatomy of an app from bottoms up. A container is really a headless SharePoint partition for your application. Uh, the best way to think about it is uh, each container is kind of like a document library, like a SharePoint document library. Now, it's not exactly a SharePoint document library, it's headless and there are a couple differences, but that's a good metaphor when you're thinking about it. And so a container is really a place where you can put files and documents and things like that. And you can have many containers within a tenant. When you do create an, a container within a tenant, your app is the one that creates it and it has full control over the containers that it manages. So those containers, the experiences of accessing content within those containers are controlled by your app. They're, they're not accessible within OneDrive and SharePoint and things like that. Your app gets, gets to control the experiences of accessing content and managing content within those containers. Now, every container, like I said, lives within a tenant um, and every container belongs to a container type. And so this is a new concept with SharePoint Embedded. Uh, it's not really too complicated, like a container type belongs to an Entra app. And so the way to think about it is, uh, in order to in order to have and create containers within a tenant, you first must create uh, an app and a container type for it. And I'll go over those steps in a second. But really, it's just a way of saying that these containers belong to your app. Uh, and that's it. And you can see the relationship between those two things. So a container type has uh, many containers and a container belongs to one and only one container type. Going a little bit deeper now into app structure and setup. So like when you want to get started with SharePoint Embedded, uh, this is how you go about doing it. First of all, you need to create and configure an Azure Entra or AAD app registration. Nothing too specific about that in terms of SharePoint Embedded. Uh, all of the APIs that you're going to access uh, to, to manage SharePoint Embedded content are through Graph. And so this is pretty standard stuff. If you want to be able to call Graph, you need an Azure app. Um, and so you need to do that first off. And then with an app, you can create a container type. Um, and so effectively, that container type uh, defines container ownership and your Azure Entra app owns that particular container type. And hopefully this stuff will make a little bit more sense in a second. Now, once you have those two things, then for every tenant that you want to create containers in, so if I'm making a line of business application, it would be the same tenant. Uh, but if I'm making a multi-tenant application, I would have to do this for every tenant. I'll need to get admin consent for the SharePoint container.selected role. And that is a new role and scope uh, that is created for uh, being able to manage uh, SharePoint embedded content and containers and things like that. 
Uh, once you have that admin consent, then you have the ability to register that container type on that tenant. It's effectively installing installing your SharePoint embedded application on that tenant. And now you have the ability to go create and manage containers and contents and contents within those containers in that particular tenant. Okay, so that's the anatomy. Uh, I'm going to get into uh, some of the demos here. I'm going to show you how you enable SharePoint Embedded. This is something that you're only going to need to do during public preview. Uh, once we go into general availability, you won't need to do that. It's just uh, something that we need to do now. And then we'll do a quick setup with the VS Code extension and show you how to run the sample apps and use the Postman collection. So I'll break out of PowerPoint now and we'll go open up a browser window. So I'm logged into one of my developer tenants. I'm in the Share or I'm actually in the Microsoft Admin Center. I'm going to go into the SharePoint Admin Center. And once that loads, I'm going to go into settings. And I'll show you how you can enable SharePoint Embedded. Before you can create a SharePoint Embedded application, and before you can install a SharePoint Embedded application on your tenant, you have to do this step. So you can see there's a new setting here within the SharePoint Admin Center called SharePoint Embedded. You can uh, click that checkbox, press enable, and that's it. Now SharePoint, SharePoint Embedded is enabled on this tenant, so I can both create and install applications uh, on this tenancy. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. Now I'm going to go and show you the quick setup with the Visual Studio Code extension. And so this is a new extension. It's also in preview. Uh, the way to find it is open up Visual Studio Code, go to the extensions uh, section, and then you can just search for SharePoint Embedded. Should be the first result that comes up. You can see there we've got the new extension. It's in preview mode. What this really does is it automates some of those uh, getting started steps that I that I was talking to you about. So extensions installed, and that created this new SharePoint embedded option within the action pane on the left hand side. Uh, once you go into the extension, the first and only thing you can do is to sign in. Uh, you need to sign in with an administrator account. If you don't have access to an administrator uh, user account on your tenant, or if you just don't have a tenant at all, you can obviously get the get your own tenant with the Microsoft 365 Developer Program. I think Vesa mentioned that as well already. So I'm going to sign in. Um, let me just confirm which tenant I'm using here. Apologies. I am using the 435 tenant. OK, so I'm going to sign into the 435 tenant. All right, that's it. That'll bounce me back to the extension, so I'm signed in. And the only thing that I'm able to do now is to create a free trial container type. So I'll do that. And this is again, like I said, automating those steps. Uh, so the first thing I wanna do is create an Azure Entra application registration. I'm just gonna go with the default here. It will create one for me and configure it. Uh, and then I'm gonna name my container type. Uh, I'm just gonna go with the default name. So while that's doing all of its good work in the background, so it's gonna create an app and it's going to create a container type where that app owns it, and it's going to register that container type on the same tenant. Um, right now, in the Visual Studio Code extension, uh, it only supports free trial container types. Now, I didn't cover it before, but there are actually two types of container types. One is free trial. Uh, that's to be able to get you started uh, you know, playing with the APIs and building a proof of concept application quick and easy. Um, you don't need a credit card. You don't need an Azure subscription. You can just do that. It lasts for 30 days. The content in there will expire. It'll get it recycled. Um, but you can also create paid container types. I'll cover that in a future session. In order to create those paid container types, you have to use the SharePoint PowerShell module, and you can create it that way and set it up with an Azure subscription. Now, it's prompting me for consent on this application. Um, like I said, you, in order to register the container type, you have to get consent on that app. So I'm just going to run through those steps and accept that. Uh, and now it's going to do it one more time to get a access token. And there we go. So it should be creating a free trial container type for me, and it registered on the container type. Looks like the registration didn't succeed. I'm going to try that again. All right. So that container type and app are created, it's registered on my tenant, and now I'm actually to, able to go and manage and create containers um, and, and manage the content within them. So now I'm gonna show you with the extension, you can actually load some of our samples directly from, from GitHub. Um, so I'll show you the steps to do that. 
I just click load samples here. It's going to warn me that it's going to put some of the configuration settings, including the, the secret for this app uh, in plain text on my machine. So um, there's two types of samples right now. We have a JavaScript, Node.js, and Azure function-based one. Um, and there's also another one uh, with written in ASP.NET. So what I'm going to do is there's, I selected the JavaScript one. It's going to fork that or clone that repo directly from GitHub and put it onto my local machine and now put it into my workspace. But it's not just going to grab the sample. What it's actually going to do is uh, take the configuration files or the configuration settings from the app that just got created, and it's going to inject them into the config file on, on this uh, local cloned copy of that sample app. And I should be able to, because there's a VS Code configuration for the sample, I can actually just click Run right away. Uh, and what that's going to do is it's going to kind of set up and load this sample app with one click of a button. Um, now, it is going to take a minute or two because it has to run NPM install on both the client and the service, and then it has to start both, both the client and the service applications. And so all those libraries are going to get pulled down. While that's happening, I'm going to show you how you can use the Visual Studio Code extension to kind of get quick, get started quickly with the Postman collection that we have. So I'm going to go back over to the SharePoint Embedded extension. And again, in here, another one of the options we have is to export Postman config. So I'm just going to do that. And I will throw one of these, uh, throw the file here on my desktop. This is an environment file. Uh, let's see what it, it created a new environment file. So it's BD3AA. I can open up Postman now. And I have it open already to the SharePoint Embedded Collection. This is published in our sample apps repo at the moment. Uh, so you can import the collection. There's instructions within our documentation to do that. In the SharePoint Embedded Postman Collection, there's both a delegated and application folder. So you can use both of those types of authentication with SharePoint Embedded Graph APIs. What I'm going to do now, though, is import that Postman collection or Postman environment file that we just exported. So this is the one that we exported from the container type and app that we just created. There we go. I'm going to go over to my environments. You can see here, all I'm going to do is select it so that's my active environment. There's nothing too fancy in here. It's just the app ID that we just created, uh, the tenant that we created it on, and the container type ID, and, and some secrets and certs, uh, cert private keys and things like that. With that uh, environment imported and selected in, in, in Postman, I can actually go into the application folder, show you some of the APIs. Now, next week, I believe, I'm going to be doing kind of a deeper dive, and we can explore some of the uh, APIs here. But I'm just going to show you, like, we can go into the list containers, for example, and I can show you that I have no containers. I'm making an app-only call, call here on the graph API. So it gives you a, a little glimpse as to what the APIs look like. You can see that I don't have any containers because I just created this container type and registered it on this tenant. So now I'm going to go back into the Visual Studio Code. And hopefully, it looks like it's still running. Um, but I was hoping that my app would be uh, ready to go. Uh, we'll see. Maybe it should, it should come up shortly. If not, we can explore the, some of the APIs a little bit more. All right. I'll open up a new tab and we'll go to localhost 3000, which I believe is where the app is going to be running. It might not come up quite yet because it looks like it's still trying to get it. It's almost there. While it's doing that, I'm actually going to show you uh, how you can create a container. So I'll, I'll, I'll uh, give you an even deeper sneak peek only because it uh, looks like it's slow to pull the libraries down. So what I'm doing here is going to create my first uh, file storage container within this tenant. Um, you can see there's the graph API. It's currently on beta. Nothing too special about this request, though, other than in the body of the request. I'm going to give it a display name for the container, container created with app only auth, give it a description, and then you need to provide that container type ID, which is coming from my environment file. So I'll create that container. And again, the way to think about a container is it's almost like a SharePoint document library. So I've got now an empty container. It's a place where I can go put files and documents within it. Hopefully now, oh, it looks like it's still taking forever. Live demo. Yeah, I wouldn't call me pro. I can see the chat here. It looks like we're not quite up and running with that application. Um, so I'll try refreshing it again. 
Mm, not quite. Oh, maybe it's coming up now. Yeah, it's thinking about it. Uh, bear with me for one moment. Yeah, that's. Uh, I think these things are expected. Just warnings within uh, within NPM starting the app. Hopefully, I don't waste too much of your time. I've got one minute left. Once this loads, I can show you the sample app running. Most of the issues that, or most of the delay that you're seeing, is because it takes a little while to install all of those npm modules, or libraries, I should call them, uh, for for both the client and the service. Once once this comes up, hopefully, I can show it to you. Um, it uh, it will be a sample application. If not, no big deal. I can show it to you next week. Uh, but basically, it's a sample application that allows you to kind of crud containers and the contents within them. And so uh, you can go create containers. We should be able to see the container that we just created uh, through Postman. And then you can upload files and manage files and things like that from within there. So if that doesn't start in the next, say, 15 seconds, I'll just uh, move on and not waste your folks' time. And I can show you, I can start next week with a quick demo of the sample app. Okay, but I, I will depart and move on, um, and we'll we'll uh, call call it the call it there and leave it at that, and uh, we'll talk to you folks next week with uh, some of the deeper dives of the APIs. So we'll explore some of the APIs, how you can get delegated access tokens and create containers, manage container permissions, manage the content within containers, and open up files and things like that. So we'll leave it at that. Thank you very much. Thank you.